Welcome to another day in the life episode of the Tech Talk with me, Kazim. Vincent Cock is joining me on the show today to share his story and his journey uh, so far in tech. Um, hi, Vincent, and welcome to the Tech Talk show. Hi, 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 everyone. Yeah, so thanks for having me for this uh, show, a day in the life of a Microsoft technical trainer. So, so, so before we delve in, Vincent, can you please briefly introduce yourself now and share uh, your background as a Microsoft technical trainer with my audience. Yeah, definitely. I would lo love to. Yeah, so I'm a Microsoft technical trainer uh, now and I'm based in Singapore, right? Yeah, my focus area are on AI robotics, Internet of Things and cloud computing, right? So previously, I I actually worked in a startup company called uh, Jupiter, so where I actually uh, sells out the AI robotic kicks to the schools. So it's also related to education, right? So I'm, I'm really passionate in this uh, education field and hence uh, technical training is kind of like a dream for me so that I can empower more people about uh, learning and uh, sharing in this space. Yeah, so I have about like two years or three years experience in the cloud. But previously, actually, I'm from the hardware space, right? So embedded uh, engineering all that because I was uh, electronic engineering. So, and after that, I, I found out that my passion is more on the uh, education and hence I shift it over to the, uh, as a technical trainer role. Yeah. And, and right now I'm being really enjoying my day-to-day -day life in Microsoft as a technical trainer. Yeah. So it would be nice to know, Vincent, what does your typical day looks like? I mean, for a technical trainer, do you just train all day? Could you walk us through your daily routine? Of course. Right. So, well, your assumption of training all day is probably wrong. <laughs> I, I may not be training all day. I mean, of course, for us as a trainer, we need to prepare ourselves as well before training, right? So that's why there's some others, uh, preparation days and also, uh, so, and others, right? So let me just kind of like walk you through. So typical day, I mean, like, let's say I'm, I'm, I'm a technical trainer, right? So I will need to prepare first and also get the certification for the course that I'm teaching. I will be teaching. So for example, I, I will be teaching about Azure Fundamentals. I need to get the certification first, right? So that I need, I know the entire uh, syllabus and all that. And then I will, after I get certified, then that's where I will start to spend some time, which is my day to day. Uh, maybe I will spend two or three days of my time to prepare for teaching, right? So teaching, how do I teach? Uh, what kind of quizzes that I prepare? What kind of lab that I do have if for my learners, right? So that the for delivery and after that so well besides that actually for my team actually i was a part of the fundamentals uh, trainer team so uh, actually uh, we also do some microsoft virtual training day moderation so if you are familiar with microsoft virtual training days those are the free like training days uh, videos that you can attend for free and get those knowledge right yeah so i'm actually uh, perhaps one of the moderator behind those videos yeah so and also yeah, so after like we preparing all these kind of things, like my I'm let's say I'm ready to teach, right? So I will be scheduled to teach uh like maybe like next month on this uh this subject, right, or this uh certification course. So actually usually we already like three months ahead, we know what we are planned to to teach. Yeah. So and that's where where I teach about like fifty to hundred learners per session per class. So that's where sometimes I have like three days, four days class, and that's nine to five p.m. Right. So for my uh, Singapore time zone, but of course sometimes I do support some other time zones like India or that. Right. So that's why like it's eleven thirty to seven thirty kind of things for me. Right. Yeah. And of course recently we, we do have uh, some different kind of uh, uh like uh, blended learning experience. So that's where we do have a uh, flexibility for the learners so that. It's not nine to five, so it's like uh two hours in the morning and two hours in the evening, right? So that gives a lot of flexibility for the learners to come and learn and ask questions wherever they have doubts. Yeah. So basically that that is like my day to day job. Learn and share, learn and share. That's it. And keep on upskilling myself. Yeah. Uh, okay. And and just for those wondering, right, as a technical trainer working at Microsoft, how often do you train? Do, do you have to oh. train? every week or is it something you do once a month what's the frequency ah, I like see. that is a very good question so well we do have some of the kind of like targets so we need to teach about 
I think out of like 20 working days, we need to teach at least uh, uh, 12 to 15 days kind of things that we need to be teaching, right? So of course, then there's some other days is for some other events and also like preparation days, right? Yeah. So these are the kind of like typical uh, like responsibility for us. It's not like once a month. So it's actually usually, if I'm not teaching, I'm learning something like that. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. So I, I want to ask as well, Vincent, what motivated you to pursue a career in technical training? I mean, you, you mentioned earlier that your background was in engineering, right? Yeah. So were there any specific experiences or influences that led you down this path? All right, that is also a wonderful question. So, well, I, I would really love to share about like why a technical trainer role or education for me, right? So back then, I think... Uh, in I think after graduation or that I I mean I graduated from electronic engineering, and by then of course uh, automatically I will be in the engineering field, semiconductor fields. Actually, I was from Intel earlier on, right? So like uh, as a platform application engineer, right? So but uh, back in my university time, actually I I get exposed to something called Maker Fair, right? So Maker Fair is something like uh, exhibitions where they are all the innovators, very creative people. They create some different projects and they showcase it, right? So it's more related to education, STEM technology, right? Yeah, so STEM, uh, education, all these kind of things. So that is where uh, I attended the, my first Maker Fair back in Shenzhen. That is like 2014. So I got really, really inspired with all these kind of things. And and that's where when I back to like Malaysia back, in, back then, I actually uh, approached the local community as well and I told them that I wanted to organize the PNAM Mini Maker Fair as well. And I got the opportunity to do that, right? And that's where I, I got to like expose to all these different peoples and stuff. And I, I, I find that I really enjoy teaching, uh, learning and sharing with others. That's really empowered me as a, as a person, right? So that's where I think uh, that's how I really like find my passions throughout the way that I, I say that I'm no longer interested in engineering, so I'm, I'm more on the educations. And I think uh, before I joined Microsoft, actually I got the opportunity to train adults as well uh, on AI robotics for my previous job. So that's where I, I really like love trainings and, and that's where I, I got a job in the technical trainer role in Microsoft. And that's really glad that I'm able to uh, go through that and, and, and be who I am right now in Microsoft. Yeah. So as a technical trainer, uh, especially working at Microsoft, so what are some of those key, uh, key skills and qualities that you believe are essential for one to be successful uh, in this role, in this technical training role? Well, I think as a technical trainer, uh, definitely as the name suggests technical trainer, so I need to have the technical knowledge, right? So, but technical knowledge, we can learn. We, we can learn it all, but we may not know it all, right? So that's what uh, they always uh, say about growth mindset, right? So I think definitely you need to have a growth mindset so that you can successful in this role, always learning. And of course, uh, in delivering those virtual training, so especially instructor-led training, you need to know how to use the different tools, such as whiteboarding, uh, and then after that, you need to do like, like storytelling, case studies, and also using different instructional methods so like discussions or maybe it's using some different quizzes to engage with the learners because it's a virtual training. So it's like full day training. So you need to have this kind of skill set to know how to, uh, also energy as well so that you know how to engage with the learners. That's why this brings me to the soft skill side. You need to have the soft skills side, uh, communications and, and, and the kind of energetic uh, energy so that you are like engaging, empowering, inspiring your learners so that they keep engaged throughout the whole day. Yeah, so I guess this, these are some of the key points that you, uh, I believe is really essential for success in this role. Yeah, so that, I mean, if you are attending a training, your trainers are not energetic and like very low energy, I guess you are probably not interested in listening, right? Yeah, so that's what I believe is really uh, crucial for the training, yeah. I'm sure people would be curious to know, right? Um, Microsoft offers a wide range of products and technologies, and you're a technical trainer at Microsoft. So I'm sure people want to know, do you specialize 
in a particular product or do you have to teach many technologies as a technical trainer for Microsoft? Well, maybe uh, for others, I mean, for other trainers, I'm not sure. But for myself, currently, I do not have any specialization, which I'm also trying to uh, kind of like see which to specialize because I think there's like data, AI, security, right? So I think we are given the opportunity uh, to select what we want to specialize in for the fundamental course, associate level course and expert course, right? But for myself, uh, actually, I was teaching all the fundamentals, uh, 900 courses like AZ 900, AI 900. And now I started teaching like Power BI, PL300, and because there's a demand in this space. So that's why I, I ramp up myself on this and, and so that I can uh, share about that. And then right now, I also focus more on AI, right? Because AI is everywhere right now. Yeah, so I just passed the AI 102 uh, just last Friday and uh, just get certified and I actually will be delivering some courses uh, soon as well. Yeah, so that's why I think we are given a lot of the flexibility to choose what we want to deliver and according to the market demand as well. Yeah. So, so as a follow-up to that, uh, what are some of the valuable resources uh, or perhaps platform uh, that aspiring Microsoft technical trainers now can utilize to enhance their skills and knowledge? I mean, you've mentioned that in your case, you have to train multiple technologies. Yeah. So, so it would be nice if you can share some of uh, these valuable platforms or resources that they can leverage. Of course, I will, I will tell you, Microsoft Learn is, is the <laughs> most valuable thing that you can uh, leverage yeah. on, right? Whatever certifications, you will get it there and it's free, right? So you can just go through the learning path, learn everything that you need, the study guide, the practice test, whatever there, you can learn about it. The only thing is that you need to spend the time for uh, learning that, right? So, and, and that, that is really the, the top uh, like resources that you really need to go through, Microsoft Learns. And also right now with the Microsoft Build, there's a Microsoft Build edition of the Cloud Skill Challenge. And that is where I think a time to time, Microsoft do run this kind of cloud skill challenges as well uh, for you to upskill yourself, right? So that's where it's good. And for this Microsoft Build Cloud Skill Challenge, there's also some challenges that you can take and you can earn some uh, associate or expert level certification exam voucher as well. So to uh, grab this opportunity to uh, to upskill yourself in this space, yeah. So what advice would you give to someone who is considering uh, a career as a Microsoft technical trainer. Are, are there any specific steps or strategies that uh, they should follow to kickstart their journey? You know, if they're looking to be like yourself, for example. <laughs> well, I, I will not say it's really specific to Microsoft technical trainers, but it's really about uh, entire the careers. Know what you want, right? Know your strength, what you are really good at, where, I mean, Probably you can just uh, think about like what are your strengths, what are your weaknesses, what do you enjoy doing that, right? But of course, for me myself, uh, if let's say you uh, wanted to uh, consider like uh, getting into like Microsoft technical trainer, I do share about my journey into Microsoft in another YouTube video, so I could probably uh, share with you the links uh, so that you can have a look at it, right? But I think some of the key points is that not just applicable for Microsoft technical trainer, but for myself actually how do I really get into Microsoft as a technical trainer is really have to be thankful to my uh, mentor, right? I do have a mentor that really coached me about like, what is my strength and weakness? That's where she challenged me. Hey, Vincent, focus on your strength and not your weakness, right? But of course, we embrace our weakness and work on our weakness, right? So your strength, what is your strength? So think about it. It's not a one day, two day answer. It's a it's a lifelong answer that you need to search about, right? What are your strengths? What are you good at, right? So that's why I got challenged and I think about it. And slowly right now, I, I found that I really like teaching. And that's where I, I, I get myself into the Microsoft Technical Trainer. So really, you need to know what you uh, love to do. And of course, if there's a mentor or friends that can help you, that would be good, right? Yeah. And also, the next thing is that Take initiative, right? Take whatever initiative that you can and, uh, and according to your time flexibility as well, right? So push yourself and do your best for the things that you can control, all right? And also leveraging all the resources that you can out there, right? So like Microsoft Learns and all that. So the, the key thing is that for you to, whether you want to learn it or not, right? Your commitment, right? 
yeah, and also uh, expand your comfort zone so that you you try out different things so that you know what you want really, right? And uh, perhaps the not the final thing yet, but the one key thing is that invest in yourself, invest in yourself, your knowledge, your experience, so that you can deliver more to others as well, right? Yeah, and also I would like to uh, highly recommend for those that really are looking out for jobs or up like networking professionally. Please make use of LinkedIn, and this is how I met Kazim as well, right? So please make use of LinkedIn to network professionally, and that's where I got the job uh, in Microsoft as well via LinkedIn and network with different people, and I share about uh, Microsoft uh, certification stuff and all that, right? And this is really like my uh, more than my uh, e resume; it's really like a live uh, portfolio for myself. Yeah, so I think yeah, that that's really some of the. Uh, key takeaways or advice that will really get to someone, not just for Microsoft technical trainers, but for some general role as well. Or these are some of the steps that I went through. Yeah. Thank you so much, Vincent, for spending time with me on the show today. It's really been insightful, you know, all of the things that you've shared on the uh, on the show with me today. But, but just before we close out, is there any last words from you? Well, that's, uh, I think there's a ways I love to share one of the, my favorite quote for my learners, right? And I also would like to share it right here. It's really about get inspired and make great things happen, right? So I hope <laughs> this uh, this session is inspiring for you and you'll make something great happen or maybe something great will happen in your uh, life, yeah. All right, so you're listening to Vincent Cork on the show today as we're going to wrap up the show today. I hope you've been able to learn from Vincent's story. Be sure to stay tuned for more exciting episodes uh, of the Tech Talk. So please do like, comment, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. On that note, it's a bye-bye from myself and Vincent, and I'll see you again another time. Bye-bye. Uh, bye. <laughs>